Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is Pastor Daniel coming back to you on this Facebook Live. Um, I want to, we're back here at uh, doing things online this afternoon. Um, took a week off to uh, to go and minister to uh, the church, Cons Consecrated Bible Church in Chino last week. Uh, for those of you there, I just want to say thank you for having me uh, and uh, looking forward to serving with you all once again. Uh, hopefully in the in the near future here and uh, but you know we're back here on Facebook live uh, we're continuing on with our series called prayer matters and um, you know I just want to again as I always do show my appreciation to all of you who who come and be a part of uh, uh, this message and who tune in with me uh, every week or, or mostly every week at least and uh, I just want to say thank you you know, for those of you who have been uh, following along, you know we've been in a series about prayer, uh, a series that we call Prayer Matters, and, and it does. And uh, the reason why we entitled it that is because I understand what, when we talk about prayer, prayer can be a struggle sometimes. For whatever reason, we we we, we struggle with it. it. It seems a little bit weird to us, you know, where where it's almost like we're talking to 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 ourselves or we're talking to nobody. You know, but I, w I really want to tell you that prayer indeed matters. And, um, you know, God hears our prayers. He encourages us to pray. Jesus himself uh, tells us to, to pray and to not give up. Um, you know, there we, we know that when God's people praise, uh, God moves. And, um, you know, and, and, and there's some, some aspects to prayer that I'm hoping that this series will help us in, in our struggle as we pray. Uh, because let's face it, you know, it's uh, there, there's just some times when we're like, well, like, geez, you know, uh, it, it's just hard for us sometimes. As Christians, uh, especially if you grew up in the church, you're like, you're like, hey, you know, I, I, I grew up in the church and I know we ought to pray. It's one of our spiritual disciplines. It's our Christian obligation. It's our, it's what we do as, as believers. And, and we, and one of the things that we do is that we pray, you know, and, and even though we struggle with it, even though that, that it may seem weird sometimes, even though that, uh, um, you know, we can be discouraged in our times of prayers, it, it can be weird for us at times. And so, you know, there's, there's times when uh, we, 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 we just struggle with it that, to the point that we even stop praying. You know, and, and I just want to tell you, for those of you who have who have, are in the middle of those things, I want to just let you know that prayer matters. And today we're going to talk about a subject that uh, I, I think is, is a lot of fun. And um, because a lot of us, we, we regardless of how long we've been walking with, with God, regardless of how long we've been in church, um, we, we, we tend to have a little patterns in prayer. Amen. We, we, we tend to try to structure it uh, in a place uh, where, where it's manageable for us when we pray. I mean, I, how many of you, for example, have heard the, the acronym ACTS, right? A-C-T-S. You know, they call it adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Amen? You know, you, you pour out your adoration and your praise to God, and then you, you, you confess your sins if you have sins, and we all have sins, right? We, we're, we, we, we give them our thanksgiving, and, and then we, we, give a, we tell them what we need, our supplications, and, and, we, and, we, and we structure our, uh, our, 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 our prayer life that way. And, and there's another acronym called HEART, right? We honor God, we examine our motives and examine our ourselves as time of introspection. We ask for help in our for our needs. We 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 request for have for for others, and then we thank God. You know, heart H E A R T. And 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 um, there's another one called pray P R A Y, which means praise, repent, ask, and and we yield. You yield to the Holy Spirit's leading. And, and and we can structure our prayer life that way, and and you know, and I, I would dare say that that there's not there's nothing wrong with those things, you know, and and they're 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 great tools for us as we develop our time of prayer, as we develop our our prayer life, if we put it that way. But what if, what if 
we looked at prayer a little bit differently? What if we we look not looked at prayer as as an obligation? We don't look at it as a a recitation of prayers of of, of, of other people's words. But but this is a quote that I've um, that I, I'm going to be using throughout this whole series, and and it's a quote by a pastor over at Hillsong uh, Phoenix. His name is Terry Crist, and and he says this. He says that that prayer is an opportunity for us to engage with a loving God based on our relationship. Amen? That, that, that a prayer is an opportunity to engage with this loving God, with this loving God, this God of the universe who loves us on basis on your relationship. And if it's based on your relationship, then our, our prayer life will only go as deep as our revelation of God is. And who you know God to be, you know. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we 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 did a message here uh, about our revelation of God, going through and looking at uh, the Jesus's prayer, right? The Lord's prayer. When they asked Jesus, Jesus, show us how to pray, and Jesus started with, "Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name." And and so, therefore, you could you could surmise that that God is our Father. You can sur surmise that that God is is holy, and you can surmise that God is our King. And and, and if, if you didn't hear that message, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to that message a couple of weeks ago, because it will open your eyes of just a little tidbit of who God is supposed to be. Because let's face it, we we all have our premise of mind, we all have our assumption of who God is, and and, and for you to to take what you who you believe God to be. And 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 size it up with the scriptures would be would would be a very pivotal time for you to do that because your prayer life will only go as deep as your revelation of who God is. But I want to take you also to a passage of scripture today. Take you to a passage of scripture in John chapter eleven. As we talk about prayer, as we talk about engaging in this loving God on the basis of your relationship. As we engage with him, as we we, we understand who we, he is, let's go to, let's go to John chapter 11 because I want to show something to you here. In John chapter 11, beginning with verse one, it says there this, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and, and his sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with, his, with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister sent, sent a message to him, saying, Lord, behold, who, he whom you love is sick. I want to emphasize that third verse because it says, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. What if we came to God? What if we came to the Lord with that premise in mind? Lord, he whom you love is sick. He, the, the Bible talks about in Jeremiah 31 verse 3, God tells the people, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That means there's a love there that God has loved us before eternity past and he's going to love us even after eternity future whatever time that period is he's going to love us forever he's loved us forever in the past and he loves us forever in the future he's loved us with an everlasting love and i want to i want to ask you here today as we go through this message what if we went to god fully realizing and fully reminding ourselves that he loves us not 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 loving us, not not going to prayer based on need not going to prayer based on 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 desperation not going to prayer on anything else other than that god loves us what would that do to your prayer life what would that do to your confidence in your prayers what would that do in your walk w with god you know, I, I, I dare to believe, I dare to believe this could be life-changing for all of us. 
I dare to believe that it could change your whole prayer life, understanding and knowing that God loves us. And, and, and I know that many of you, have, as you hear this message, you're like, of course he loves us. I know that. But do you? But do you? When your prayers go unanswered, when you're disappointed in prayer life, when you can't seem to connect with the God that you know whom loves you, is that who you believe who that God is, that he's a God who loves us? Now, let me give you a little bit of, of, of background here, okay? We, we, know that, we know that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were great friends of Jesus. And we talked about, about what it means to be a friend of God last week. And, I, and again, I want to encourage you, if you didn't hear that message out of uh, Consecrated Bible Church, which I delivered there, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to that message. Because what does it mean to, to be a friend? You know, and we know that, that Jesus, just based on security, he, he, every time he passed through Bethany and on his way to Jerusalem, he stayed with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They were friends. They were close friends. And, and because of, for security purposes, either people tried to, to get something out of Jesus or because they, they wanted to kill Jesus or whatever it may be, Jesus stayed with them for security purposes. purposes. And, and it tells us that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were probably fairly affluent. They, they, they probably had some wealth to them, you know. They were young, mostly, uh, people believe. They were possibly unmarried, you know, because the, the culture at the time, if that they wouldn't name Mary and Martha by their names if they were married to somebody else. They would call they would call out their husbands and say that they were their wives. But but they called Mary and Martha out out personally. So they, it probably means that that they were they were unmarried. They were probably again they were probably a certain amount of wealth affluent. They had professional mourners, if you know the story. They had people there crying uh, and mourning after Lazarus, after Lazarus had passed. You know, the fact that, that Mary had some perfume that she anointed uh, Jesus' feet with means that they had some money behind them. And so they're, they were wealthy, they're, uh, they were affluent, they were friends. And, and so you could, you could see that there was, there's something there that, that Jesus... Uh, would call them to be friends. And in the same way, Jesus calls you and I to be friends. We may not have to be uh, wealthy or, 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 or have, um, you know, ha have some costly perfume, but, but Jesus calls them, called them friends. But, and, and that's who he hung out with. And so it, it, it was with confidence that when they sent a message to Jesus saying, the one whom you love is sick, they believe that to be true. They do believe that it was true because they were friends. They hung out with them. They spent some time to, with them. They, they, they would know if Jesus loved them or not, right? And so you can tell that there's a close relationship here, the same kind of close relationship that Jesus calls you and I to be a part of. And so having said all that, as we come to this to this message and as we come to this story, there's a couple of things that I want to share with you in this message. That as we talk about prayer, what are some things that we can glean from this? What are some of the things that we can we can see some application for our own lives and our own prayer life as we approach the 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 throne of God and 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 and, and to to pray to him and what is our mindset to be? Is it an obligation? Is it a spiritual discipline? Or is it coming to God on the basis of our relationship? Before we go into this, let's go to God in prayer, shall we? And let's ask God to speak to us this afternoon. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you grace. We give you honor and praise. We thank you, dear Father God, for your grace and your love and for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, that you've given us your son. That because of him, Lord, we have salvation. We have a restored relationship with you. And that, it, that, that we can escape the, penalty, the penalties of death and sin and hell. Because you have given us life through your son, Jesus Christ. With all that, Father God, I just pray that you would bless this message. As you call us to be your friends, I pray that you would speak to us now. 
I pray one more time that you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that you would increase and that I would decrease, that you would take over, dear Father God, that you would anoint and that you would fill this place, dear Lord, knowing, dear Lord, that God, that all the hearers of this message would know that they've had an encounter with you and not, not of me. So bless this time, we pray. Bless our times, dear Father God, as we, we look to hear what it is that you have to say to us. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The first part of this message is obviously the prayer. Amen. In verse 3, it says, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Again, what if we came to the altar of God praying that? You know, many times we come to the altar of God because there's there there's a need. Amen? Because there's a need. Lord, I, I really need some finances. Lord, I really need this job. Lord, I have been sick and I need a healing. Lord, um, my my marriage or my relationship is falling up, apart. Please restore. We we come to God with so many needs, and, and it's okay. He can handle our needs. The Bible says that he knows what we need even before we even ask. You know what that tells me? That tells me he's got it. He's got it even before we ask. He knew what we needed even before we knew what we needed. Amen? Sometimes we go to God and even, even with our own merits. Lord, I've been in church. Lord, I've read your Bible. Lord, I've served you faithfully. Lord, I, 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 I even know some of the scriptures. Lord, I... Uh, you know, I'm your child and I've changed and Lord, can you help me with this? And, and, and we'd say all these things, you know, I mean, I've even heard pastors pray that way. Lord, I've been faithful to you all these years. You know, and we come to him with our merits. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't believe, although God doesn't look at your merits to, 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 uh, to, to answer prayer. You know, it's not what you do. It's about what he's already done. Amen. It's not what, what we can do for him. It's what he's already done for us. And so I, I get it why we would want to say that. We're trying to leverage our own selves and, and try to seem like we deserve answered prayer. And it's, it's, it's part of our human inclination to do it that way. We do that with one another sometimes. But yet we don't need to come to God that way. What we can do is we come to God understanding that he loves us. And that he wants good stuff for us. And that his His love is already upon us. He's already given us his favor. He's already given us his goodness. He's already given us a purpose. You know how I know that? It's because he sent his son to the cross. If, if any of you are listening today, and you know that there's a common theme to all my messages. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus because that's how he shows his favor upon us. He didn't have to send his his son to die on the cross for our sins. He did so because he loves us. He did so because the Bible even says in his word, for God so loved the world. He, he was so enamored with us people. He was so, so much loved us that he gave his only son. He, get this now. He so loved us that he gave. Yes, he saw our need, our, our need as sinners that we needed salvation. Yes, he saw us, and uh, I believe he saw the, what the time would, would be like for us, what eternity would be like for us if he didn't send his son. I believe he saw that, you know, and, he, and, he, and, and it was out of need that he saw even before we knew it. Some of us are listening to this message and, and still don't realize that we need a Savior. But because he loves us, because he loves us, he already gave. He gave his son for you. And he gave it to me, gave it to me, and it's based on his love for us. No, we're not saved by love. We're saved by his grace. Amen. His unmerited favor. That's how we know we know his favor is already upon us. But but what if we because knowing that he already loved us, just based on that scripture alone, that we understand it's because he loves us. That when we pray. It's because we, we, we have it in, in our mindset. We have it in our heart that we're coming to the throne of grace because he loves us. And that he, that we can think of how much confidence we can have understanding that his favor has already been upon us. 
His love is is already been is already ours before future the the eternity started before time began, and it will his love will continue even way into eternity. Think about how our mindset, our our heart was to be as we come into the throne of of grace that way, understanding that he loves us. We're not yes we're enter we're entering to a throne of a of a holy God, uh, this great King of heaven, this 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 omni um, um, omnipotent God, this omnipresent God, uh, this holy God, but it's a God who loves us, a God who wants us to come in, a God that is has has uh, extended His scepter to to us through the cross of Jesus Christ because He loves us and He wants us to come in. Think about how, how that how much confidence we should have in prayer, understanding that He loves us and He wants good for us. Psalm 119, verse 68, he says that you are good and you do good. This great God Almighty, this great God that that all these creatures in Revelations chapter 4, this this if you look at that that uh that verse, these these monstrous creatures with multiple eyeballs, these these hideous, they look like the blob from back in the 70s, if some of you guys are old enough. That 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 some some of these some of these creatures would cause us to freak out. Some of us would would like look, it's an alien and all this other stuff. But yet all these creatures and all these beings look to the throne of God and say, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, this powerful God that all all creatures that ever existed." Look to the throne of God and say, holy, holy, holy. They fall down in worship. This great God loves you and he loves me. Think about that. As you enter into the throne of grace, as you come into the to the to, to the foot of his throne, to the foot of the cross, coming to him, connecting with him, knowing him, a place of intimacy. He knows your needs, he knows your wants, but connecting with him on the basis of relationship. You come to him in prayer, saying, Lord, behold, he who you love is sick. Lord, the, he, me, whom you love, needs you. We want you. We, we need to know more about you. I need your help. I'm going through something right now where I just need you, Lord. And I come to you because, because I know you love me. You know, when you come to God with that prayer, when you when when you come to God, sometimes things just don't happen right away. Amen. Sometimes the manifestation of the answer of prayer doesn't seem to come. People s still are sick when you pray for healing. People are, are 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 still praying for a breakthrough, even when a breakthrough hasn't come yet. People are people are are, are looking for still working for work, even though we we prayed and we prayed. For God to provide and for God to to bring work, and sometimes that demands patience from us. Amen. Look in verse five through six. If you know the story, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now, now let me emphasize this. So he, Jesus hears. That the one whom he loves is sick. His, his buddy, his homeboy, his friend is sick. And I want to emphasize something because the way this was written, I believe, was purposefully. Okay? That this was written purpose. Because when he said that, he, the Bible says that when he heard he was sick, it says, so he stayed two more days. It didn't say, but he stayed two more days. He said, so. He stayed two more days. Like, what? If you and I heard that a, a buddy of ours were sick or a buddy of ours was uh, w was in danger and needed our help, we, we drop everything and go. That's our human inclination. But the Bible says that Jesus' response to the news that Lazarus was sick was to wait two more days. What? Does that make sense to you? That, that he would wait, and some of us kind of feel that way. We'll pray, we'll send a message, 
Lord, the one whom you love is sick. The, lo the one whom you love needs you. And it seems like nothing happens. Now, in this day and time, let me explain something to you. Jesus waited two more days. Now, today, if if, if someone was, was sick or dying, and, and, and when they finally were gone, you would just hook them up to a machine, and, and the machine would be able to tell you, yeah, they're gone. But back in those days, they didn't have those machines. Back in those days when you thought somebody had, had, had passed on, you would wait a few more days just to make sure, just to be assured of their death and that they were gone. That was that was the heart monitor back in the days. Just wait two more days. And so I wonder, could it be that Jesus waited on purpose to make sure that Lazarus was gone to demonstrate only God can bring things back that only God can bring him back to life again. That only Jesus can call Lazarus out of the tomb. No one can doubt saying, oh, he might have been alive this whole time. He was, he was just sleeping. Oh, uh, um, I think he was just resting. His, sick, his, his sickness had, had prompted his, his vital signs to, to, to not be readable. He was alive this whole time. There was no miracle. But there are times in our walk with God that God would allow us to go through a time of patience, a time of quietness, to, to be sure that in our circumstance and in our situation, that there is no other possibility that, that, that things have changed for us other than God had come to our rescue, other than that God alone could come and change things in our lives. Only God can fix things, that only God can restore things, that he lets our, our situation and our circumstance fester for just a little time longer so that when things come and he turns things around, that people will look at us and say, only God can do that. Only God can do that. What is it in your life that seems dead that only God can bring back to life again? Is it a career? Is it a, a purpose in your life? Maybe a ministry? Maybe it's a relationship? Maybe you're believing a, a loved one to be to get saved and, and you look at their life and they're like, oh man, they're so far from God right now. And you're praying and you're praying and you're praying, but yet there's nothing happening. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. How would it help your prayer life when, when God seems silent and heaven seems shut and you're waiting? How would it affect your prayer life if you keep reminding yourself that God loves you and he plans good for you, that he is good and that he does good? In the times when, when prayer seemed to go unanswered, as if he was not going to answer your prayer, as if his answer was no, you're going to stay in your muck and your mire forever. How would that change your prayer life? Understanding that God loves you. Understanding that he has good in store for you. How would it change things? Would you continue to travail in prayer? Would you continue to hope against no hope? Would you continue to seek God's face, understanding that he loves you? Because so many times we tend to give up in prayer. So many times we 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 put a lot of time limit in our prayers. Like, oh, it must not have been God's will. Oh, I must have messed up somewhere a long time because God must must believe I don't deserve this, so He's not granting my prayer. Oh, I must have messed up. Oh, God must not love me. He must love somebody else. Maybe those blessings are for somebody else and not for me. I want to tell you today, if that's you and you're praying and those are the things that, that, that the rationale behind your, your stopping prayer, it is a lie from the pit of hell. And God is looking for you to continue on to seek his face. That it, because maybe it's one of those situations that God is waiting for, for your situation to come to a certain point. And when he answers your prayer according to his word and according to his ways, 
that people will look and say, oh boy, only God can do that. Only Jesus could call a dead man out of the grave. Only Jesus could, could call things as if they were, uh, uh, to make them alive, as if you, even though when they looked dead. Because see, I want here's what I want you to know. A lot of times we put a, a, a time limit on our prayer. Well, we'll say, well, let me pray for it until such and such a time. Let me, and when that time comes and if nothing has happened, we stop praying for it. But I want to tell you, it's not so much about time, but it's more about God's timing. When an opportunity comes for God to, to answer prayer and, 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 it, and it meets your faithfulness in prayer and God starts to move in that particular timing, when only God gets the glory, something happens in us. Something happens in us. James 1 4 it says, but let not patient, but let patience have its perfect work in you, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. When you become patient in prayer, knowing that it's God's will, knowing that this 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 too can bring him glory, knowing knowing that the thing that you're praying for is it comes alongside and it and it correlates with God's purpose for your life then it's not about timing, but it's about timing. God's perfect timing. And when something happens when you allow that to happen, that, that a work starts to happen in you. When, when, when you're patient and, and, and looking for God's answer, God's starting to so, do something in your life, in your heart. He starts to mold you and fashion you. You start to become a little bit more like Jesus. Where, where patience will, will start to to, to, where God starts to put some, starts to cut some desires out of your life that aren't pleasing to him. Well, he'll cut certain things out of your life that's not according to his word. You know, I, I shared with the, the people in Chino last, last week, God has a promise for each and every one of us. But if God opens the door to that promise right away, he can't open it with us hanging on to certain things in our lives. Some of us have some old habits that we need to get rid of. Some of us has our has some our own way of thinking that we need to get rid of. Some of us have, have some rebellion in us that we refuse to let go of. And you can't go into a place of promise hanging on to those things because it won't be consistent with what he wants for you to, to, to have and to do and, and for you to have your purpose. You can't go on you can't go into that door knowing that knowing you have some of these things that he's still dealing with you about. Some of us are carrying that like excess luggage and we're carrying it around like a shopping cart, like a homeless person with a shopping cart. And we're looking for God's promise and we're looking for God's blessing. You can't go into that with that. Let let this patient have its perfect work in you. Let go of some of those things that's keeping you from what God has for you. Patience had to come for, for, for Mary and Martha, for Jesus to come, because God was trying to accomplish something great in their lives. And it took two days. And it actually took a little bit more than that, because Jesus still had to go to them. What was it that Mary and Martha was holding on? You Stay tuned for that for next week, because I got a continuation on this message, on what that could be, and what that could be for you, and what that could be for me. But when, when you pray, with the confidence that, that God loves you. And when you have the patience to see God, God answer that prayer, look what happens. Prayer happens. Power happens. An answer to prayer happens. In verse 20 to 22, it says this, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, even if, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Now, now I know that there's many of you that know this story. And you know what's going to happen. You know that Jesus is going to re raise Lazarus and call him out of the grave. But here's, here's what I want you to do. I want you to empathize. With, with with Martha's grief. Here she is, she's crushed. Her brother is dead. 
Her hope was shot. Her heart was crushed. Her per, her, her her message to, G, to to Jesus went unanswered. She's so disappointed. She's so distraught. She's like, oh man, I can't believe God didn't come through for me. Here we are. We're his friends. We only we we haven't asked him of much. We only asked him to come and help us in this one great matter. But yet Jesus didn't come. He waited two days, and here she was, face to face with the Savior of the world, face to face with the promised Messiah. And when she hears of Jesus coming, she goes and she goes to where Jesus is. She didn't wait for Jesus come to come. She, she went out to Jesus. And I don't know if, if when she heard she had a she had a sense of optimism, maybe a renewed sense of hope. Her her mourning subsided as she goes to Jesus. Now this is the same Martha. If you remember the story earlier in the book of John, that this was the Martha that as Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to Jesus' words, she was in the hospitality mode. She was cooking, she was cleaning, making sure that Jesus was comfortable. She wasn't listening to his words. She, she, was, she was making sure that a job was done. But yet in the time of her life, when, when she's going through grief, when she's going through, through disappointment and, and discouragement, she goes to Jesus and she has a renewed hope. You know why I know she has a renewed hope? Because she says this, even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give you. That's hope. That's hope. That she goes to Jesus and she says, even now, today, I want to ask you, any, any of you there who, who may be going through it, who maybe feel a little bit discouraged about your times of prayer. You might have been praying for years. You might have been praying for, 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 for decades, asking God for, to, to, to do something in your life, to give you a purpose and a hope in the future. You might have been asking for for a relationship or or for provision, and 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 it seems like God is not answering. But yet, you, I, I want to encourage you to be more like Martha, where she has this even now faith, even now that her brother is dead, even now that that she's hired professional mourners, even now that she she probably is the one that cooked the food for everybody for the reception at the funeral. Even now, she says. Even now that I, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. I don't know what your circumstance is. I don't know what your situation is. But, but maybe today God is calling you to have that even now faith. Where even, even where, things, where, where God seems silent and heaven seems shut, God is asking you to come out of the, uh, 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 of the tomb and say, even now, God, I can do something in your life. Even now, come to God. Even now, come to Jesus, casting all your cares to him because he cares for you. Even now, confessing your sins to God that your soul might be saved. Even now, pray to God while he can still be found. Even now, where, 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 where you're asking God for provision and for breakthrough. Even now, God can heal your heart. Even now, God wants to speak to you and show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. Even now, God says, God says, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Even now, even now, God wants to hear your prayers. Even now, God wants to, to take your broken heart and he wants to bring you a healing. Even now, God is saying, come, come, I will show you great things. Even now, God wants to give you eternal life. Even now, even when now, when when disappointment and discouragement has has settled into your heart and you've started and you've stopped praying. Even now that that you go to church and you go through for the for the sake of modality, for the sake of of, of check marking a box. Even now, where where you see relationships are broken and they can never be healed or restored again. Even now, God is calling you. And he's calling me. Even now, today, God is calling. And as every week, as every week I share with you, it starts with Jesus. It starts with Jesus. It starts with having a relationship in, with him. 
it starts with uh, putting your faith and your trust in the in the in the work of, 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 of the cross where he stretched out his arms and he said and and and, and he says lord forgive them for do that they do not know what they do it starts with that as jesus himself what was the means in which God restored our relationship with him. God can restore anything to you. He can answer your prayers. He could show you a, a great relationship with him. He could show you a plan for your life and for all eternity. You know, a, a few years ago, I don't know what it is. It was right before Christmas time. And, uh, I got myself into a little bit of a of a funk. Now I didn't cuss on on on, on social media, okay? F U N K N K, all right? And and it's a little bit of a depression. Now, for no, all of you who who really don't know a lot about me, I I actually know when a spirit of depression comes on. I I've dealt with that for a little bit, and and God came and He delivered me mightily, you know. Um, he gave me a sound mind and he restored my heart from that. And so I know when a spirit of depression comes and it was actually right before December. And, and, and for those of you that do know me, well, I'm a big kid during Christmas, you know, I love Christmas time and, but I felt the spirit of depression come and, and I prayed it through and I, and I, and I, and I couldn't get it off of me. I, 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 I felt this thing like hold on stronger and I, and, and just, you know what? I got so sick and tired of it. That I that I I went out to the backyard and I cried out all to God I was like Lord I know you love me, and I know that you have a plan and a purpose for my life and I started to call down all the promises that He had given me, all the promises that that He has for me, all the promises that He that He had shared in my life, that 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 He had, that that out of His Word that He spoke to me via Rama, via Rama and 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 all of a sudden. As I as I start to recite how much he loved me, how much he cares for me, how much he plans a purpose in my it seems like the the spirit of depression started to loosen up and it was gone. A lot of us just need to come to the throne of God today and just remember be reminded of how much he loves us. How much he 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 loves us with an everlasting love. And again, do you want to know how much he loves us? The Bible says in this does he demonstrate his love, that he sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. That means that Jesus took the the the, the penalty of our sins and he took it upon himself and he paid for it himself. That's how much you know he loves you. You go out through all over this world and see a sign of a cross. And it should remind you of God's love. How would it change your prayer life, your prayer time, if you just knew how much he loves you? It'll change everything. It can change everything. Today, if if, if you're listening to this message and, and you've never given Jesus Christ your heart, you've never put your faith and trust in the work of the cross, where he died, where he shed his blood and died at Calvary. If that is never, if that is you today, and you've never done that. I want to give you that opportunity. I know I'm preaching a little bit later, a little bit longer than I than I'm used to, but you know I I don't want to skip this step because there's many of you that that need to hear this message and you need and you need to handle business with God. You need to be reconciled back to Him, and it starts with Jesus. It starts putting your faith and your trust in all the work that He's done at the, the atoning work of the cross. Today, if that's you, I want to tell you, there's nothing, like I say every week, there's nothing magic about the uh, the words that you speak. There's nothing magic about, uh, like it's a spell. Or what, 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 is, what is matters is what is in your heart. Understanding that you're a sinner and that we've all rebelled against God and that we've all fallen short. But then, but, but you confess that Jesus came to make all that different, he, he came to, to pay the penalty of all of that. And then he is Lord and he's Savior. Maybe that's you today. If that is you, then then I want you to, 
to, to I want to lead you in a prayer. I want to lead you in a prayer. You know, there's many that have prayed this prayer with me over the past year and a half, and I'm so grateful for all of you. But for those of you who need to pray that prayer today, I want to lead you in a prayer. And it's just this. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner, that I have rebelled against you, that I've sinned against your law, and I have fallen short of the mark that you have for me. But today, I ask you to forgive me as I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, knowing that he is the, your, the only Son of God, the promised Messiah, that he, he went to the cross to pay my to pay my sin debt and on the third day he rose again and because he lives i too can live i ask you that you fill me with your holy spirit that i can live the rest of this life for you i ask all this in jesus name amen if that was you today and you prayed that prayer with me i'm going to ask you to uh, send me a message. You could do it on the comments under this video. You could uh, send me a, a message on, on Facebook Messenger. Or if none of these, if you're listening to this on, on an, another outlet and you're not on Facebook, you could listen to this uh, on, or I'm sorry, you could respond to me on uh, via email at promiselosangeles at gmail.com. Promiselosangeles at gmail.com. If you do that, I want to be able to get you some information. I want to get a Bible into your hands. I want to be a resource for you. If you have any questions, um, if you're not even understanding what it is that we, that the decision that you made, uh, connect with me. Um, if you'll just send me an email or a message, um, you know, I can call you, you can call me and uh, use me as a resource to answer any of those questions that you might have about the decision that you made today. And uh, I'll be sure to connect with you and uh, make sure that uh, we, we will we will seek out all that God has for you. Amen. And so if that's you today. Then, then please send me a message somehow uh, through some of these outlets. Uh, if you need prayer um, and you're on this Facebook page, we have the Thursday night prayer meeting every Thursday. I want to invite you to that, uh, that we're doing online via Zoom. So you can do that in the comforts of your own home. And um, if you have any prayer requests, please send them over, and I would love to pray for you. Um, for the rest of you, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Happy Mother's Day for all of you uh, mothers out there. Um, may God bless you for all that you do. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just say thank you for all of you uh, who have joined me. And uh, if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Be happy to do it. We got some upcoming events coming that uh, please stay tuned for those announcements. Uh, I'm happy to uh, that that somehow that God is opening some doors for us to get back into our city. And so God bless you guys. I look forward to meeting all of you soon. Uh, have a great week. And once again, if there's anything I can do, please let me know. God bless. Bye bye.